now that I have shown you the entries of this particular problem, if this is classified as FVPL, FBOCI, or amortized cost, let's have a recap regarding the theories. Zoom out in each part of the solution and see how they are different from each other. All right. So we go here. For FVPL, once again, if this is the first video that you're watching, make sure to watch first the other uh, videos where we made the journal entries for each treatment. For FVPL, the transaction cost is expense, but for OCI and amortized cost, they are capitalized. So if you scroll down here, initial treatment, once again, FVPL is just the acquisition cost for FVOCI, acquisition cost plus transaction cost, and amortized cost is the same. For interest income, oops. What we did in FVPL is we had the face value multiplied by the stated rate. Of course, times 6 out of 12 because this is interest semi-annually. But for FVOCI, that is our previous balance multiplied by the effective rate. For short, we are using the effective interest rate method, which is the same here in amortized cost. The changes in fair value is classified in unrealized gain, profit, or loss. Right? And then that is the fair value at year end minus our carrying amount. For, for FVOCI, that would be the fair value at year end. Also, subtracting it by the carrying amount, that is the unrealized gain or loss for OCI. However, for amortized costs, changes in fair value are ignored. Next, for the sale of investment, that would be the selling price minus the carrying amount from last year. That would be your gain on sale. Pretty straightforward based on what we did a while ago, right? But for FVOCI, there are steps, right? So step one, recognize the interest received and discount amortization. Where did we do that? Here, right? Step one. We recognize the interest received and then the discount amortization. Step two would be to update our carrying amount to match the fair value, which is the selling price. So let's put that here. Update carrying amount to fair value, which is the selling price. And this is all happening on the date of sale, right? And the discount amortization is always based on the amortization table. All right. For amortized cost, that's the same step, right? But no need to update the carrying amount to fair value. Instead, the selling price minus the carrying amount based on the amortization table would already be your gain or loss on sale. Notice, here we have a step three, right? Or we have a step two update first, and then we recognize the sale. But for our, and by the way, the gain would be 564. The effect of 2023 transactions in net income would be the interest income here. That's based on the amortization table, right? And then the gain on investment. Let's go here. Notice this one, no need to update the carrying amount on the fair value, which is the selling price, because again, for amortized costs, the uh, fair value changes are ignored. So it's straight up just ask yourself, what would be our carrying amount on the date of sale, right? Based on the amortization table. So straight up, we recognize the sale. And the difference would be just a credit gain on sale, right? 
So the gain on 2023 is simply the gain on sale and the effect on interest would be your July 1 interest income plus your gain on sale. Once again, your gain on sale is your selling price minus the carrying amount based on the amortization table for amortized costs. Okay. I know that this is a lot to absorb, but that's why you have this video. If you, uh, if you did not understand it the first time, you can replay it or even replay the other videos to do the problem again. All right? It's normal for you to take this in slowly. That's completely fine, right? Slow and steady wins the race, as they said. Now, regarding the accumulated balance of unrealized gain, for both FVPL and the amortized cost, it's simple, right? There's no accumulated balance, so therefore there's no issue. For amortized cost, changes, once again, in fair value are ignored. However, for your FVOCI, there is a difference, right? If it is mandatory, sale minus the acquisition cost would be equal to the gain. Debit unrealized gain, OCI. Remember this? You credited gain on investment. This is literally what we're doing in step three in our journal entries. If you observe here, right? That's step three. We recognize the entire gain, or the entire balance of unrealized gain to our gain on investment. All righty. Next, if it's not mandatory, if it's made by via a revocable election, sale minus acquisition cost is not charged as gain, which will increase our net income. Right? It's not that. However, it will be closed straight to retained earnings. For entry, debit, unrealized gain, OCI, credit, retained earnings. So that's how they are different for FV, OCI. Okay, this is probably the point where you want to take a break because we will now proceed to a new example. This time, it's a serial bond. I will be account for them differently if it is FVPL, FVOCI or amortized costs. See you in a bit.